welcome back. This video, I will be breaking down my observations between the Ford exhaust system and regen process versus the Ram exhaust system and regen process. To your left, the left part of the screen, I have the Easy Link, a little snapshot of the Easy Link, and then a snapshot of the Ford pickup truck exhaust system layout. To your right is the Ram 2500 exhaust uh, and the exhaust system layout below it. As you can see just from the photos, they're completely different. Completely different. And we know that. Um, and there's a reason why the Ram is superior to Ford. The Cummins exhaust system is far superior than the Ford's. The Cummins exhaust system is more efficient than the Ford's. And the Cummins exhaust system makes sense versus the Ford's. Now the Ford exhaust system is also similar to the GM exhaust system. GM puts their DPF last, which doesn't make any sense. Now, with the Ford, their chassis cab models, their exhaust system is a little bit different. They got the dock, that's your diesel ox station catalyst, and your DPF first, then your SCR system. Now that makes sense, okay? But we're just talking about the pickup truck variants. Okay, let's start with Ford. So as you can see in the screen, I have a couple um, gauges here laid out. I got the Ford monitors, their emission system is a lot different than Ram. They got a DPF bank one inlet pressure, DPF bank one delta pressure, and DPF bank one outlet pressure. Okay, so this DPF one inlet, obviously that's the exhaust going into the DPF. And then you have the DPF bank one outlet pressure, that's the exhaust going out of the DPF. And then you got your DPF bank delta pressure. Now this is the pressure that uh, you know is the difference between the two uh, sensors. Okay, then you got your DPF soot load closed loop. Now this little gauge here, this one here, this is what the truck monitors. Once this right here reaches 100%, the truck goes into active regen regardless. And this, this, this is really irritating, this DPF soot load this reaches 100% every tankful, sometimes twice. It is really irritating. And then the truck goes in the regen. I experience a regen every tank, sometimes twice a tank. Ford's, the Ford engine is not efficient. It's just dumping fuel, creating a lot of soot. And then, the, and then their DPF gets sooted up quick, real quick. Then you got your DPF soot load open loop. This doesn't ever get 100%. It's this one here. Then you got your EGT 1, 2, 3. For some reason in the Easy Link, it does not monitor the fourth EGT sensor, and I don't understand why. Now we're going to go to the exhaust. Let me lay this out for you. Your EGT 1 is here. EGT 2 sensor is like somewhere here. EGT 3 is here. EGT 4 is here. All right? Now, every time I drove the Ford, without, without fail, it would go into a regen. And I monitor this every time I drive. I do a lot of highway driving. This DPF soot load closed loop gauge always reached 100%. I mean, it would reach 100% quick, okay? Every 250 miles to 300 miles or so, it would, this would reach 100%, easy, all right? And every time, again, it goes into regen. And these, the exhaust temperatures get really high. I mean, I've seen exhaust temperatures up to over 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when the truck is not doing an active regen, just driving down the highway, right? Exhaust EGT 1 and 2, that's the sensor here and somewhere here, usually is around 520, 550, maybe 575 degrees Fahrenheit. But EGT 3, that's the one right before the DPF, okay? That one would be between mm, 440 to maybe a little over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see the DPF, because it's last in the chute, it's the last filter in the exhaust system, that's a huge difference in temperature. Just from EGT1 at like, let's say, let's give it the highest, 575 degrees, to the DPF at like 475 degrees, that's a, that's a difference of 100 degrees. 
okay? But in order to do a passive region, you have to have temperatures of over 600 and 650 degrees Fahrenheit in order to do a passive region. So the Ford exhaust system, unless you're towing something, you will never, you will never ever reach passive region. Day-to-day -day driving, highway driving, you will never see it. Never. Every time I drove on the highway, I would always have my easy link and always be monitoring it. And never once did it go into passive region. Never once did I see this soot load, closed loop gauge, this counter here go from, uh, let's say, 75% down to zero. Never. It always reached 100, and then it would drop. It would take 20 minutes. 20 minutes was pretty key. Uh, that was pretty routine. It was a 20-minute active region. But one time I had a 46-minute, I mean, 45 to 46-minute region. That was awful. Go from 100% all the way down to maybe 8 or 9%. Never got to zero. Usually between 8, 9, maybe 13%. Okay, For some reason, it stopped there. It would never go down to zero. So I don't like that the DPF is last. The DPF should be right behind the dock, first in line in the chute. Okay, it should not be bef it should not be after the SCR system because you got diesel exhaust fluid being dumped into here. That's a fluid. I mean, it's a liquid, and it's gonna cool the exhaust. This little gap is like two feet gap plus liquid being dumped in the exhaust. Obviously, there's gonna be a temperature difference. Not only that, that DEF injector is getting sooted up with soot. I don't understand why you would put that, this system, in between the dock and the DPF. Doesn't make any sense. Because all this is getting clogged up with soot. I, I don't get it. And it's one big massive system. You can't remove one and clean one out. You've you got to take the whole thing off. I mean, that's just ridiculous. All right, now let's go to the RAM. RAM's monitoring is a little bit different. You got DPF pressure. Soot load, DPF soot load. I think my previous video I said 0.4. What I meant to say was four grams. Never got past four grams. Okay, and then your DPF delta pressure. DPF delta pressure, same as the Ford is the pressure between um, the before the DPF and after the DPF. All right. Then I monitor EGT one, two, and three. I can monitor EGT four and five, but I don't because EGT one is here, EGT two is right here, and EGT three is right after the diesel particulate filter. Those are the those are the EGT sensors that I'm most concerned about, and then the EGR valve, and then the temperature of the EGR. Those gases going into the engine is what I like to monitor. And this picture was taken just on the highway. It's doing, it's doing a passive region. The Ford was taken when the truck was in active region. The Ram, I hardly ever went into active region. Most of the time, it was always in passive region because, as you can see here, temperatures are hot enough so the truck can do a passive region. So my EGTs, except for EGT number two, right, 580 degrees, this is like an, an anomaly. Most of the time, these temperatures were always above 600 degrees. And once the soot load reaches, I don't know, like it never got past four. What I noticed is when the RAM got to four grams of soot, it would go into an active region. But it hardly ever got to four grams. It usually stayed between one and three grams of soot. And then once I get on the highway, these temperatures go up to like, 600 plus degrees, and then the DPF soot load counter would drop from three, two, one, and then zero. Zero. Ford never got to zero, but the Ram got to zero. And as a matter of fact, as I drive, the DPF soot load would remain between one and zero on the highway for the entire length of driving. Like if I'm driving five or six hours, it would stay between one and zero, maybe get to two, but then it would drop back down to one or zero. Why? Because the exhaust gas temperatures are hot enough to conduct a passive region. So the DPF is constantly burning off the soot. Whereas the Ford doesn't work that way. It just collects soot. It collects, it collects, it collects until this soot load, closed loop sensor or whatever, reaches 100% and then it goes into an active region. So the Ford is not burning soot as you drive. That's ridiculous. It should be burning soot as you drive so it constantly remains clean that's how ram does it and that's what makes the ram exhaust the cummins exhaust system superior to ford because it always stays clean always clean it's always got good flow through the filter 
And once it does get to like four grams, and as you can see here, four grams is not a lot, okay? Or maybe it is 0.4, something like that. Um, but anyways, it's not a lot, okay? So, and you can see here, the RAM exhaust system, the SCR is last. This makes sense because it's after the DPF, so the diesel uh, exhaust fluid injector remains clean, all the components and the mixer and the filter and the SCR stays clean. It's all clean. There's, they're, they're not being covered in soot. And the RAM, they have the dock and the DPF right after the turbo. It's really close. So it's, it's always just remaining hot. And that's the way the exhaust system should be. I do not understand why Ford has their DPF last. They should use the same DPF system they use on the chassis cab where the DPF is right behind the dock and the SCR system is last. That way the DPF can stay hot. And if it, I don't drive a chassis cab, so I don't know. But I bet you if I hooked up my Easy Link to one, I think it would be hot enough to constantly be in a passive region. And it makes sense for a chassis cab. Why? Because they idle a lot. These are construction vehicles. They sit on construction sites and they idle all day long. That's what these trucks do. They just idle. They're not towing heavy loads. They're just idling. Okay. I got a buddy who works at a Ford dealer. He's the diesel mechanic there. He tells me all the time some of the worst trucks he sees are the ambulance trucks because ambulance trucks just sit and idle all day long. 10, 12 hours just idling. Okay. So, but it makes sense to have the deep, the chassis cab models have the same exhaust, you know, layout as the Ram, dock, DPF, SCR. That makes sense. But for some reason, the Ford pickup, they don't do it that way. They purposely have the DPF last. They purposely, these EGTs never get above 600 degrees while driving normally. And so the DPF has to get full and the DPF has to be regenerated. So what does the truck do? Goes into active regen, which causes you, the consumer, what? Money. It is wasting your money because your truck is constantly in an active regen. So you got to spend more money because you're burning more fuel. The RAM, the reason why you've seen my uh, fuel mileage charts, the RAM gets superior fuel mileage compared to the Ford. Why? Because the exhaust system is always clean. And it hardly ever goes into active regen because it doesn't need to go into active regen because it's always in a passive region because the EGTs, the, the exhaust, is hot enough to burn off the soot passively. That's great. That's what makes the RAM Cummins emissions after treatment system far superior than the Ford. So I drive a 19 RAM. I've got over 314 miles on it. I was monitoring my DPF. And by the way, RAM has a DPF filter monitor. Never got above zero. Never once in the 314 miles that I drove yesterday, driving it back, did it get above zero. It remained at zero the entire time. But the EGTs were hot enough to burn off the soot. So it always, it, the DPF is always cleaning itself. Now, the Ford, regardless if your DPF soot load closed loop is 100% or not, once you reach 500 miles, your truck will automatically go into an active regen. That's also irritating. If it doesn't need, even, even if it doesn't need an active regen, once you reach 500 miles, it's going to go into active regen. Why? If it doesn't need it, don't do it. Irritating. Really irritating. Ford just burns fuel. That's what they do. They cause you, the consumer, to burn more money because you're burning more fuel. Ram Cummins, I've never had that issue. Now, across all the brands, Ford, Ram, and GM, right? All these exhaust systems perfect? No, because they're all built by man. Is man perfect? No. However, which system is best? Me personally, and what I've seen is the Ram. The Ram Cummins exhaust system and the way they run, the way their EGR, I'm sorry, regeneration process is programmed in the computer, how it monitors the um, exhaust gas temperatures and the DPF and the way it conducts the regen process, all that is the, it's far superior to Ford, far superior because you save money and you save fuel. By the way, coming back from my trip yesterday, 23.1 miles of the gallon hand calculated. That's amazing. Amazing in the Ram. So anyways, 
That was a little bit of a rant, but I hope this better explains the differences between the two and what makes RAM the best.